It's been a positive start. I didn't realise it was only the, the second time that we had been unbeaten for a year, but uh, you know, I, I think it's been more about looking at the, the performances last year, more about looking at um, assessing players and about giving opportunities to players and obviously trying to balance that with making sure we got good results. I mean, probably the way I would describe it is positive possession football or positive possession soccer. Um, by that I mean that the US uh, team, the US development system, US soccer in general, has a particular way about them playing and, and you've got to be careful that you don't go in and try and make huge changes to that because it's been successful. Uh, but as the game progresses in general, I think it's important that the technical aspects of the game uh, become better, uh, that the team uh, has an ability to be a bit more flexible in how it plays. So, you know, from my perspective, particularly with the senior team, you know, we want to play a brand of soccer that is, that is fast when it needs to be fast, that can change the tempo when we need to change the tempo, that is very much possession based but attacking possession based. And that's, you know, a mixture of what we're trying to do. Well, I think, I think there's a mix, uh, and, and it obviously depends at, at what age that you're talking about. Obviously, at the younger ages, the technical elements become most important, you know, that sort of 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 age group. And then as they progress, getting that ability to then transfer that into to game situations, so their game awareness and their ability to use those technical skills effectively while they're learning to play the game then becomes the next important step. It's critical, particularly in a country like the US. The US is unique in, in women's soccer anyway, with the sheer size and the sheer numbers of players. So most other women's countries, um, you can, you, it's easy to find a good player because they stand out easily and the numbers aren't as big or the size of the country isn't as big. In the US, what we have is both an enormous country and a huge playing base. So it's very important to go around as many games as possible, as many tournaments as possible, see as many you know, youth games as, as our scouts can possibly see to sort of unearth the talent that's out there because there's a great chance that there's some e extremely good talent out there that gets missed. Well, I, I think the structure that's in place now in, in women's soccer at the, at the development and youth level is, is really very, very good. You know, essentially, you know, we have got April and Jill in, in charge of that structure and they have scouts all over the country. And those are the ones that are basically on the ground identifying our players. From there, it's the players getting the opportunity, whether it be in an ODP programme and then looking at making the development steps from there. At teenage level, it's like anything, there's a few things, there's not just one thing that you have to focus on. Um, you know, I, th I think it's important that the, the training environment that's created by the club and the coach, that's very, very important. So that a player feels confident, feels comfortable, feels safe, and is, is put in a situation where they a learning situation that can help them develop um, and really challenge them. So all those things are, are really important. Um, it's always a balance between working on the technical skills, working on the game skills, working in team tactics, etc. All that becomes part of it. But, so you need a mixture of both the, the off-field philosophical part of your life from the club and then the actual on-field coaching that develops and challenges players. For me, not too much coaching. <laughs> uh, it, it, for, when you start younger players, you want to have activity, you want to have lots of movement, you want to have lots of variety, and learning the skills by doing that. You know, lots of touches on the ball, again, lots of challenges, etc. I think that becomes important. I think sometimes um, 
in the, this day and age, we tended to get carried away with the coach dictating and dominating everything. I think there has to be a learning environment for our young players where they, they learn through the process, through making things up, through actual their experience, rather than the coach stopping stuff every two or three minutes and saying, no, you must do this, you must do that, etc., etc. So for the younger age group, yeah, the practice, the repetition, um, the, the correction, really important, but at the same time, that variety um, and keeping things moving, keeping them active, all those things for me become very important at a younger age group. So they enjoy going to training, they love doing stuff, they're in an environment that they really enjoy and they're learning and they're developing and they're active. Particularly for young kids, the last thing you want is to put them under the stress of winning games. Everybody wants to, I think it's like anything and it's, there's a balance there, you know a kid goes out to play, an eight year old is going to be the ultra competitive kid, there's going to be the kid that stands and picks the grass out of the ground and there's going to be a whole range of things that are happening. So again it's more, it's more about the experience rather than stressing the winning or stressing the result or putting pressure on kids to win at younger age groups. So again, great if you win, not a disaster if you don't win, you know. Uh, the, it's, it's getting that balance right and, and as I say, going out and if a kid scores 10 goals and feels great, that's okay. But you know, I think it's really, really important that then kids are not berated because the team hasn't won a game during the season or you know, they're just not very good. They're there to enjoy themselves and develop and play. Well, if we can get it right, if we can get it right, and there's a huge amount of great things going on in this country. There's a lot of really good coaching going on. There's, there's very good structures in place, good systems in place, good people. Um, if we can get all of that right, the, the kids that could come through the system, this country, both in men's and women's soccer, you know, well, women's soccer, stay, not just stay at the top, but actually put a gap between them and the other countries. And in men's soccer, you know, there could be a real uh, resurgence of the, the men's national team going up the rankings, MLS getting better, you know, uh, male players playing, significant numbers of males playing in the major leagues overseas. You know, there's huge potential in this country. I'd like to wish US youth soccer a very happy 40th birthday.